Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to Ask Lur, the uh, program where we A your cues that you give to us through the Oh, the receptacle known as youtube.com slash loading ready run where you can become a member and ask us questions in further Ask Lur episodes. Uh, but for today on the show, we have James. Hello. And Adam. Hello. And I will, as always, be your boy, Ian. Want to remind you as well uh, that uh, we have a Patreon that you can go to at patreon.com slash loading ready run. It helps us keep the lights on and actually do these things in addition to receiving the questions and then thinking about them for a while and then thinking about when to do these uh, programs and then doing them and then giving them to you for your enjoyment on the other end. We got a bunch of questions here and we might as well start things off with the top of the document because, I mean, this is the way we do things. We start at the top and work our way down. Pinball Witch asks, what's a niche interest of yours that you think could be an open, interesting topic for an anime or other medium you prefer? I have a feeling this was aimed directly at me. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. so I mean, I, I was I was going to just say, can't. I mean, isn't that the joy of anime that any niche interest can be an anime? Isn't that the whole point? I thought that was the whole point of anime. That's yeah. kind of exactly it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for the, for years, I, I I wished for a show that was about curling. That would be uh, uh, set set in the high school in the north, and you'd you'd get these amazing uh, action packed shots of the curling going on. But as I as I move into my old age, I, I honestly really want a show called I think Legend of uh, Legendary Taxpayer Jim, <laughs> who is just a guy who has to sit down at his taxes and just do them. Mm, I like it. I mean, I was going to say, so it's not a niche interest, but obviously uh, this little guy right here uh, is obviously an anime in of itself, many mm -hmm. animes for many decades. But what about an anime about building Gundams? So you'd like to be watching Gundam uh, G Builders, yeah, I believe? Yeah, they did that already, James. Yeah, yeah I figured, that's what I figured. I knew that <laughs> if I held this thing up, you're going to be like, yeah, that's an anime. In fact, that's four animes. <laughs> yeah. In fact, it's still going. It's been going for 10 seasons. People love it. Yeah. You're actually the creator. You didn't know? Yeah. But in, in, in anything mm, can be an anime. I mean, yeah. I mean, most of my interests they've already done into anime, right? Wrestling. Video oh games. yeah, no, yeah. I don't yeah. really have any niche interests. What about <laughs> what about a what about a home theater uh, setup uh, business? You know, they go around and they install really high end home theaters. <laughs> yeah, they made the anime end. about just a pair of movers. <laughs> yeah, you know, I thought you asked for a freaking tax <laughs> anime. Yeah. At least my guys move around. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, Ian's see... guy would move around. Ian's person would move from the job to home, and yeah, where if they s see... they stay alone with their three cats. If you've seen some of the videos of Japanese moving companies, where they they expand oh. these core plast tunnels into your hallway yeah. to keep things from knocking, yeah, yeah, I could see that being pretty exciting, actually. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm friends with B and Ian. I have seen those those. Uh, is there Japanese a hockey anime? <laughs> yes, uh, yes, yeah. there is. Uh, yeah, is it new good? one this year? Uh, no. <laughs> Well, at least you're honest. Yeah. It's it's half hockey, and then when they're not on the ice, they're an idol team. Which that's what if it was a what if it was an NHL anime, and it was actually voiced by the players? Yeah, like that old like the old uh, Wayne Gretzky All Stars yeah. cartoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bo Could Jackson. You... Yeah. I want I want a ja I want an anime about hockey starring Ovechkin and Crosby. Did you know Bo friends. Jackson could jump over a car from end to end? I mean, I can jump in a car. Oh, no, <laughs> you could not. <laughs> I, would, I would, I'll bet you an old fashioned Wait. that you cannot jump <laughs> over a car <laughs> from end to end. You know, I as, mean, as it, and like a regular car. Uh, like damn, a, I, like, I was yeah. just going to be like, Ian, let's meet up later <laughs> today. Let's do this. <laughs> you wouldn't even be able to get over the bumper. Yeah, I know. Take the roof rack off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Bo Jackson was a freak of nature. <laughs> As uh, you know, as a way of building bridges here, I think what we'll do is we'll we'll make it a uh, Japanese Canadian co-production. Uh, we'll bring back uh, we'll bring back creator of uh, Spawn, Todd McFarlane, and he can do those uh, <laughs> those uh, comic book versions again. Mm. And we'll get it mm. animated this time. I can't wait till Todd McFarlane reboot The Simpsons. Oh God, has he done a couch gag yet? Because no. if not, he really should. 
That seems like something that would have happened by now. Actually, it'd be funnier if Todd McFarlane rebooted Family Guy. <laughs> and Seth McFarlane rebooted The Simpsons? And Seth McFarlane rebooted Spawn. Ooh, mm. crazies. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Seth McFarlane, creator of Spawn. I'm going to yeah. go on a limb and say Seth McFarlane would do a better job there. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot yeah, more Spawn right. musical numbers. Ooh, I love it. Our next question, Cisco456 asks, in regards to tabletop RPGs, is there a character or a moment that you have a lot of fond memories for or that holds a lot of meaning for you? Okay, so the one that immediately comes to my mind, which is why I started this question, is back in high school, we're playing Temple of the Elemental Evil or whatever it was mm -hmm. called. And Bill was our, yeah, Bill was our DM. Mm -hmm. and it was the first campaign I'd ever played. And I was playing uh, this halfling. Uh, I don't remember what... The halfling's name was. Oh, come on. It's probably something stupid like Russell Tanglefoot or something. I mean, it was high school. It was probably Instakilla or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Who cares? It doesn't matter. Move on. Um, so we're 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 working our way yeah. through the temple, and I'm sure people who've played this campaign before will know the room, or maybe I'm making all this up and we weren't playing that. Who knows? We get to a room with a fireplace. And in the fireplace is a snake, and the snake bites me. Why is there a snake in the fire? I don't know, because it's a temple of elemental evil. So? What do you put? You don't put a teddy bear in the temple of elemental evil in the fireplace. You don't put anything in the fireplace. You of just leave it for do. fire. No. Cold blooded. Snakes like to be warm. Exactly. Oh Although God. I don't remember if it was a lit fireplace. Who knows? Anyways, I died. Uh, I was sad. This was the first character I'd ever played. I'd grown emotionally attached to little Instakilla. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just kind of a bummer. But then everybody worked really hard at bringing me back to life. But I didn't come back to life as a halfling. I came back to life as like an elf or something like that. I don't really yeah. remember the specifics. But I just, yeah. I very, I just, the memory of the the snake biting me in the fireplace or something and me dying and Bill like just looking me dead in the <laughs> eye. Just being like, you're dead. <laughs> I just like heart sunk, stomach yeah. crunched up. And I was like, oh my God. And this is like way before you're, you're like too young to realize that you can just make another character and it doesn't matter, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm 16 yeah. years old. I've got it in my head. The D&D yeah. &D might kind of be evil. I don't know. Maybe I'm going to join a cult. Maybe I'm already in a cult. Who knows? Mm -hmm. And now my character, my little insta killer, was dead. D and D is a news. gateway drug to weed. <laughs> <laughs> you start so playing D and D, you start smoking weed. Oh man! Yeah. Anyways, that's the one that always pops to my mind: is getting bit by a snake in the Temple of Elemental Evil. <laughs> wow! Ian? I enjoyed my time back in uh, the first D and D uh, campaign I played as well. We we created our own little world, and there was a a group of undersea races that we somehow ended up uh, having to uh, escape from. Mm -hmm. And turns out that they were, because they were under sea races, they cr constructed all of their uh, battlements out of coral. So technically, you know, out of the terrain. And for some reason, in the last level up I'd done, I had achieved the ability to ignore terrain when mm -hmm. walking. And I had to take out the sentries at the top of this tower. So I asked the DM, okay, how, how tall is this tower? Oh, it's about, uh, you know, 20 meters tall. Huh, funny, that's about my movement speed. So I literally crab walk up the side of this tower <laughs> and take these three guards by complete surprise that just pop over the top. What's up? And <laughs> see to just murder them. Mm, that's awesome. Uh, I'm trying to think. I had a character that I really liked was uh, I had a, you know, I played with the same group for like, I don't know, five or six years. We played every Monday. And I had a character who lasted quite a while, and his name was Oogle, and he was a barbarian, a half-orc, and he was a lot of fun. Um, and I have a similar situation with Ian's, like, the terrain thing, because one during one of the campaigns that we played, our DM was like, yeah, I'll, let, I'll, I'll allow psionics. And I know that a oh, lot of no. DMs that just heard that went... <laughs> like they're like oh no so we all got to play with psionics and there was a class and this was pathfinder this is 3.5 and there was a class in that there was a prestige class <clears throat> for psionics that i can't remember what it was called but it basically gave you the same power if i was within five or if i was within i don't know a couple inches of any surface anything liquid 
it could be a chain. I could walk on it. Mm. Like my character could just run up walls. I could run on a chain and it just made every puzzle and trap just <laughs> yep. misery for him. Yeah. Like every combat encounter, I was like, I run up the wall and he's like, Man, <laughs> this it's was like, a mistake. Like, yeah. It's like I run along the chain. It's like, oh, dang. There man. are so many caves that you and I would probably just walk across the top <laughs> yeah, of over yeah. the lab of my maze. Just yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It didn't matter. But yeah, psionics were a heck of a thing. And I remember our DM looking at us and during one of the combat encounters, or it was like a puzzle or something, he's like, I am never allowing psionics ever again. <laughs> I, don't know. I mean, it's a good thing you learned with us, right? <laughs> Now, speaking of learning with the two of you, I'm going to have to do that now because Cisco mm -hmm. also asks us, what hockey teams do you follow? And uh, I mean, I, think that... I do follow hockey. I haven't followed hockey f religiously in a long, long time. But mm -hmm. my team, I don't even know how they're doing this year, but the team I like is the Buffalo Sabres. Ooh. Yeah. Uh -huh. my, my, my high points for following them were back in... It was like 2001, 2002. I think they made the Eastern Conference final two years in a row. One year we lost to Ottawa, which was a heartbreaker. I was so upset. And then I can't remember who we lost to the year before. Maybe it was Carolina. can't remember. But anyway. The answer, by the way, is uh, not that good. They are not doing. <laughs> oh, they're not, not that not, good? Not that good. I remember sometimes, like, over the last couple of years, Buffalo going, like, an 18-game winning streak or something, and James will tweet me, like, look, your team's the best in the league. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah but that's not going to hold. And then I'll check, like, a couple months later, and like, yep, right there they are, baby. I mean, Buffalo fans, uh, if you're a Buffalo fan, you will always hold the, the, the great incident of 1998 in your heart. Uh, it was the Stanley Cup Finals. Buffalo was uh, playing the Dallas Stars in the Stanley Cup final. And Brett Hull, that motherfucker, <laughs> had his foot had his foot clearly in the crease when they <laughs> scored the winning goal. And that's illegal. You can't have any party oh, part in the yeah. crease. And the refs yeah. missed it. And this is a time before they did like the the video review and then they could make a call afterwards. It was like the referee's call is final. Yeah. Oof. We're still upset about that. <laughs> You know? Okay, so why why the Buffalo Sabres? Oh, because when I was a kid, Pat LaFontaine was my favorite player, and he played for the Sabres. Okay. So, and like, the like, Sabres have been your team for, like, forever, basically. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, even as a kid growing up in Canada. And then they got, they had Satan on their team. Oh, right, yeah. In, like, the played for early 2000s. Mm -hmm. Miroslav Satan. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Loved Satan. <laughs> <laughs> you love to see it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, my answer... I mean, Victoria, born and raised, so yeah. the Canucks, of course. Uh, um, another were, person who's yeah. used to disappointment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so the Canucks have been my my team for as long as I can remember, because they were my dad's team for as long as I can remember, mm -hmm. and we just you know what grew up watching hockey and stuff like that. Um, more recently, uh, I've really kind of gotten invested in uh, Toronto, and not because necessarily of the team, but because yeah. of a YouTuber uh named steve dangle who mm -hmm. is just a really funny dude who is a ginormous leafs fan and runs a youtube channel uh where he reacts to every single game so after every single game he does a video it's lfr and um it's normally like 10, 15, 20 minutes of him just kind of talking at the camera about the game, about the state of hockey, about Ooh. all things Toronto. And he's just really funny. Uh, he's super down to earth, but he also gets just wild. Like, you think you think Adam is wildly animated <laughs> and loud? Go watch Steve Dangle's videos. Uh, I that mean, dude You don't have to compare me to other is, people, James. Is, <laughs> wow, is you think good. Adam's cool and funny? Wait till I, you see this I, other I, guy who's I way didn't more say cool and funny. funny. I was yeah. talking about just loudness factor. <laughs> this dude is loud. Um, and I've just, because of him. Your I've tone just, said it all. <laughs> I've just gotten way more invested in the Leafs than mm -hmm. I ever have, uh, which, is, which has been kind of fun. They're also, you know, a really good hockey team who... Mm. Uh, just sucks all the time for some reason. Yeah, I want the Leafs fun. to win the cup 
for the only the only reason I want the Leafs to win the Cup is a the rest of Canada would be very upset and mm-hmm. Toronto would be insufferable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they would be just miserable. Like, Most oh so. man, it would be great. I'd love it. And the rest of Canada, like Alberta, BC, oh, oh my god, everybody would be upset. Yeah, they'd be very upset. Oh yeah, it'd be great. It'd be. Real I can't good. wait. I hope it happens soon. I hope I, I don't. I die it, before it happens. I know. think if it had happened, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think if it had happened in the last two years, you know, the stand, 2020 and 2021, I think if it had happened then, and it could have, yeah, um, certainly Everybody last year. would be like big old asterisks I, on it. Yeah. I, well, no, forget that. I think actually Canada would have rallied around the Leafs in the last two years. Mm-hmm. I think they lost their shot, though. I think we've moved a little far past the whole sort of like come together <laughs> yeah. as a country pandemic yeah. mentality. We had, that, we had that COVID sensitivity going yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then we're just like, no, nope, screw it. We're past it. No, wait Toronto's, a second. Toronto yeah. sucks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's all about me again. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I forgot for a second. Yeah. Speaking of which, I do have a quick answer to this. I don't mm-hmm. follow hockey anymore, but back when I did, Back when I was in grade school, uh, Mm. we used to live in the same development as uh, Mr. Pete Peters, who was the goalie of the Washington Capitals. So I I, I do have a little bit of hockey memorabilia of a a puck with that uh, ancient team and his signature on it. Wait a second. Pete Peters? Pete Peters. What a great name. Yeah, isn't it? What the f... I need to find (laughs) it. There's no oh, history. Oh yeah, Peters, P E E T E R S. Yeah, oh, Pete right. Peter. He looks like a substitute teacher, <laughs> <laughs> and he was a goalie for the Capitals. Apparently, yeah, he was. He played for the Medicine Hat Tigers from '75 to '77, and then he moved on to the Milwaukee Admirals. Ooh, and then upgraded to the AHL. Played for the Maine Mariners. Mm-hmm. And then uh, got drafted by the Philadelphia Flyers, played for the Bruins, the Capitals, uh, then got bumped down to the AHL and played for the Binghamton Whalers. And then, redemption story, Washington Capitals from 87 to 89, and then the Flyers from 89 to 91, and then finished out his career in 91 at the Her- with the Hershey Bears in the AHL. Well, that I, tells me I had a cousin I- that played for the Hershey Bears, Wade Belak. He got drafted by the Colorado Avalanche. I mean that 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 play history just screams dude loves hockey, right? <laughs> like he was willing to go through it like that like that's a big career going from the minor yeah. leagues up to the NHL, back down to the minor leagues, back to the NHL, back down to the minor leagues. Like mm-hmm. that's a guy who just wants to play hockey and that's yeah. awesome. That's cool. It does explain though why my memorabilia hasn't increased in value. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never heard anybody say like, "Man, remember Pete Peters?" <sighs> yeah, damn it, Pete, that's Ian's retirement fund. Yeah, come on, Pete. <laughs> Jeez, how about how about one more run for the what? Gaffer? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, if he's not going to do it, Planet Hex is going to do it for me because if the person who reads this out becomes a godlike, superpowered tyrant and a rebellion must end with their evil reign, what would their ultimate weakness be? Dubs or subs? <laughs> Final that's answer. An e- that's an easy answer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I picked the opposite of whatever you say, right? Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And you're like, no, my power. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. I could see you. Well, I guess I could kind of see Ian being a godlike superpower tyrant. I mean, if you give anybody godlike superpowers, you know, there's a, gonna, there's like I a think, 50, 50 chance. I think it's way <laughs> higher than 50, 50. Nobody is responsible. I think, I don't think I could handle it. You know, if somebody is like, yeah, you're Superman now. I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah. can do whatever I want. And they're like, yeah, no one can stop you. <laughs> like I can shoot lasers out of my eyes. They're like, yeah, cool. And as long as Sick. no one's left, no one will find out. Interesting. I think it would be like yeah. one of those stories too, like where I would like try to help people, but I would just end up just murking people for no reason. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I wouldn't know my own strength. I try so to stop what, a crime and just obliterate them. So what would what would Ian's ultimate weakness be? Mm. Mm, I gun. <laughs> I would just shoot Ian. Sorry, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> Becomes godlike super powered tyrant, still can be killed by a gun. Like a gun. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I think there's a lot of things that might lead up to that gun being in front of you, but that would be the ultimate weakness, yes. Yeah. It'd be like yeah. that episode of the Fantastic Four cartoon where I had uh what's his name reed richards has the wooden gun magneto's like no my powers of magnetism (laughs) it's a wooden gun and it's work and it's loaded with abraham lincoln's teeth (laughs) (laughs) 
don't know. Magneto's a werewolf against <laughs> Abraham Lincoln, I guess. <laughs> Hold on. What propels the teeth out of this wooden gun? Magic. Yeah, ah. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That's what that's that's why that's uses... what you're like. That's the point where you're like you're never before you were like. Well, how does the gun shoot? You're like, no, it's the teeth that that's like James. Like, wait a second. Wait a hold on. Wait, how does the wait, gun wait work? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are the gun are the teeth like molded into bullets? I mean, they need to. Or be do for you just shoot the teeth? Their aerodynamic. Oh, I think you, you just you just fire the teeth. They spin like the uh, like like those uh, AR forty seven rounds through the jungle. <laughs> Really chews it up. Are there teeth rounds ah, in Tarkov? Ah, ah, ah. Uh, that was horrible, Ian. I didn't there... even realize. <laughs> Are there what? Teeth gun in Tarkov? Teeth yes, rounds there's... in Tarkov. Yeah, there's teeth rounds in Tarkov. Teeth <laughs> rounds in Teethkov. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, if the now I just was... want to make a cool game where you shoot people with teeth. <laughs> yeah. Our community and, would really like that game, I And think. then when you loot their body, it's just teeth, like, you just find in their inventory. It's like, oh, they've got so many teeth on them. <laughs> this, this is, is so absolutely what game jams are for. I hate yeah. this conversation. All right. Well, as the Packlets have taught us, if they've taught us nothing else, they've taught us that teeth are for chewing. And you chew food. And we got a question about food coming from Joe Mitchell. If everyone had to pick a new flavor of ice cream to create, what would they make? Why, when God's perfect ice cream flavor already exists? What's uh -huh. up? And what are you going to say? <laughs> <laughs> Tiger tail, man. Yeah, yeah. You're going to say tech. <laughs> I would need to make one. one. Yeah. I mean, I mean, moose tra tracks exist. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We got good old hearty vanilla. I mean, yeah, why do you need to make Hardy one? Hardy vanilla? Nobody ever yeah. says a hardy vanilla. <laughs> oh, man, I can't believe I've been out in the woods chopping down trees all day. I'm going to come down to come home to a nice hardy <laughs> bowl of <laughs> vanilla ice vanilla cream. Vanilla ice cream. Melted into a fine soup. <laughs> do you want anything on it? No, no. just plain <laughs> for me, please. Puts hair on my chest. Um, <laughs> Straight off the dome, I'm going to go with a butter chicken bone. It it's got the taste of turmeric. It's got the taste of butter. It's got a slight spice to it, and it's got those yeah. chicken bone hard candies in it. Oh yeah. God! Okay, no, no, I'm in Ian. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. I, I don't think I want to eat that. Mm, <laughs> um, I mean, there's already like I like root beer ice cream. I think root beer oh, ice cream good. is real good. Um, there's nothing like really weird that I could think of. I mean, is there like, I guess. Savory ice cream is hard to make. I know that there was a place that we went to in Seattle when we were there one time for something. Oh, yeah. Salt and straw. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And they have like savory ice cream. There was like tomato, sun-dried tomato ice cream and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It was pretty good. I think I, I think I had bone marrow while I was there. It was, <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> creamy and, and good, but a little bit, a little bit uh, weird to be thinking about bone marrow in the mouth. Yeah, it's true. It's got a good mouth feel, I hear. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I mean, let's, 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 let's continue on with the, uh, the segues here. Speaking of bone marrow and mouthfeel, uh, Joe Mitchell also asks, do you, any of you have a favorite obscure holiday or local holiday? Uh, if you don't, what should be made into a holiday? And I mean, I've got regular crispy day, which is all about that mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Any favorite obscure or local? I'm trying to think of any, I don't think there's any like local holiday, like, hmm. Are there any local holidays in Victoria? Like, no, I think so. Because the Oak Bay Tea Party Day, but that's more than a day. Isn't it? That's yeah, that's like a weekend. It's also like I guess like local holidays are generally because when I hear holiday, I think you know you think the big ones that you get a day mm -hmm. off work if you you know. Um, but I guess yeah, like Oak Bay Tea Party weekend is pretty fun. Um, but other the Oak than Bay that, Tea Party sounds like some <laughs> kind of like a cult meeting. You're like, yeah, I'm going to the Oak Bay Tea Party. Yeah. Look, as a of. person coming in from outside of the city, it kind of is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sort of. It's just a really subpar fair mm -hmm. yeah. is what it is, if you're curious. It's like if they put but... no effort into a Renaissance fair. Kind, yeah, kind of. <laughs> like it's a, I mean, it's like it's just a really lame carnival. Yeah, it's, right? it's got those traveling rides to it as well. But, yeah, it's got but the... only the ones that can fit in a ferry. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You go there for the zipper and the tilt the whirls and the the Barons terrible midway beef. games and stuff like that. And the yeah, the Baron of Beef, which is very good, but it's That's also all I just remember like, you like when I first moved here and you're like, we're going to a drunk bay tea party, Baron of Beef. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just kept screaming Baron of Beef over and over again. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that like it Victoria has like. I don't know, like three or four of these 
that every year they're all run basically or they're all staffed basically by the same traveling carnival thing. Yeah. Um, so they're all basically the same. But the Oak Bay Tea Party is like right in town, sort of. Um, but like by, by our old high school and, and stuff like that. So it was the one that like as a kid, you could like easily just kind of walk to and we would. So that just has a special place uh, for me just because of the, the memories on there. But um, what should be made into a holiday? Um, I mean, uh, my birthday should definitely be made into a mm -hmm, holiday. Mm -hmm. um, probably like national or uh, probably. Provincial? Uh, I mean, I, I would just settle for like, uh, the Victoria mm -hmm. city. Like no, not yeah. even just, just the municipality of Victoria. So <laughs> yes. like, once you cross over foul Bay, you can just ignore me. But like, if you, if you're within the confines <laughs> of Victoria, signs of you <laughs> up to a certain limit, and then yeah. you cross that limit, you're like, no more signs. Don't yeah. worry. Yeah. Does exactly. Beach get the day off? No, no. He lives in Saanich. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wait a second. Do I? I don't think I get that holiday then, do I? Oh, no. Are yeah, we you too far away? No, no, no. Oh, you're, do I? No, you're, yeah, you live. Hell yeah, I support this holiday then. Yeah. <laughs> almost, I think almost all of us live in Victoria proper. So you're all yeah. good. You all get the day off. I don't know who's going to pay you for that day off, but you get the yeah, day off. Yeah, but those dumbasses out in Langford. <laughs> oh, yeah, it yeah. sucks to suck. Sydney, man. <laughs> yeah, why don't you go hang out by the sea? No, oh, no, that's where my mom lives. Shoot, yeah, I'm no, not going to no. get a birthday present for my mom. <laughs> and also on this day, you cannot talk to your mother. Oh, the the battle lines have been drawn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, <laughs> that makes sense. Municipalities yeah. out. It's like districts well, in Hunger Games. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I know if I'm ever going to get you a gift, uh, James, it's a, probably going to be some sort of vinyl, but I doubt that it's going to be the most valuable in your collection. So Joe Mitchell would also like to oh, ask, right. what is the most valuable record in your collection? Sentimentality or monetarily? Your choice. Uh, I mean, you can answer this too, Ian, I figured. Yeah. Because you also have some some vinyl records. I totally I meant to look so. this up before we started recording. Because <laughs> I was just going to go off of what's like go to go to Discogs, uh, sort by uh, price, go to medium high, and the number one here is the Above and Beyond 2000 to 2020 collection. Um, so Above and Beyond is a is a uh, organization out of somewhere in Europe, I think, and uh, trance music. They've been going for, for decades now. And last mm -hmm. year, they released a box set with their first four albums celebrating their 20th anniversary. Um, I think it was limited to like 750 or 1,000 or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. And it cost me, I think I bought it for like 150 bucks or something like that, 175 bucks. Um, and according to this, its median price right now is 700 Canadian dollars. Very nice. Sell, sell, sell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sell the high. Yeah. Um, with the uh, Avengers Infinity War Endgame <laughs> uh, Mondo release, which is uh -huh. still sealed. I've never even opened it. Uh, coming in a pretty distant second place at 285. Oh, wow. That's uh, actually, that tops my uh, top record here. Uh, so I've what's your top the, record? The top record is, again, another Mondo release. It was the uh, Studio Ghibli Kokyo Kyokoshu, uh, which is just a collection of their uh, soundtracks from their various films. And that's uh, currently median at uh, 255. But just below it is the uh, Voyager Golden Record 40th Anniversary Edition, which is a repressing Ooh, of... yeah, that looks cool. Stuff. Oh, it's really cool and uh, really interesting to listen to of, of what the sounds are that they shot off into space that's currently going for 210 dollars. wow so like the the first two on here i'm okay with their box sets they were limited editions um and they kind of i think needed to be the third on this list is probably one of the biggest issues that vinyl currently faces which is the foo fighters um dgs release <laughs> from this past year's 2021's uh record store day and it's a single album on the front is four or five cover songs that the Foo Fighters recorded of them covering the Bee Gees. Mm -hmm. um, and they sound great. I think that they're a lot of fun. They're great. And on the other side is a few alternate takes from their album that came out um, last year. Completely like it's just it's it's a single vinyl record. It cost twenty five dollars, I think thirty dollars for me to buy at the local record stop shop right now. But because of how limited they made it and 
uh, because of how stupid vinyl is right now, especially when it comes to reselling, that thing's worth two hundred and fifty five dollars, apparently, Eek. which is just like, why? Like, I don't I don't want this record to be worth two hundred fifty five dollars. I want this record to be worth about twenty five dollars and everybody who can buy one can get one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, dear. Uh, Anyways, that those are the top three, I guess. It, does that collection. include your sentimental value? Um, I don't really have any record in my collection that has any like super because like i i only started collect like every single vinyl i own um i think i bought over the last like four years mm -hmm. so nothing's like really um super sentimental like the first one i ever bought which i bought like eight years ago which is another mondo release which is the guardians of the galaxy soundtrack is pretty cool and i like that one but nothing like super sentimental no yeah, I've, I've, I've got one here that I do want to mention just because it's actually kind of timely. Uh, we, and it was a gift from a, a mutual friend of ours that uh, they gave me. Sidney Poitier did an album of him reading uh, uh, excerpts from Plato's Republic over top of uh, smooth huh. jazz music called That's Poitier, cool. Poitier Meets Plato. And it's it's cool as hell. Uh, Such an Ian sentence. It was difficult to find, and I, I wasn't <laughs> unable to grab one, but uh, they, they turned around and found me two copies from library editions that now I have in my collection. I'm super happy to have those. That's cool. Those sound really neat. Yeah, I'd like to start adding more, like, kind of interesting things to my collection like that, so I should start looking for stuff like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. i have to give you a hand with it. That's what I got. What do we got here next in terms of questions, though, is again uh, another one from Joe Mitchell. Ian, specifically for me, oops. How much do you think playing rhythm games translates into actual sense of rhythm or music? I've been wondering this for a while, and you have probably played more rhythm games than anyone I can think of. So I wonder if this affects how you think of music or anything like that. Yes, this is absolutely, I think, something that translates. I think you can get good at rhythm games without having a sense of rhythm. Uh, but I think if you have a sense of rhythm or if you if you are a, a uh, trained or natural musician, you're going to have a lot easier of a time with rhythm games because you're going to understand the way that the music tends to work and the patterns that, that show up and how their uh, how measures are, are, are broken up. Um, but that said, if even if you don't know how to play, it's it's following patterns and repeating. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you look at the the success of something like, you know, rock band or um guitar hero from the the early 2000s and yep. uh it, that's a that's proof that people can get good at rhythm games over time by just kind of hanging out and playing with them and having fun with that but i remember watching people who who play music professionally play those games and it's just like a whole other level and you're just like oh cool that must be nice <laughs> <laughs> well, it must be nice to be good at something that you practice for years and years. Yeah. Jeez. Well, I have this problem when I'm playing Rocksmith, which is another uh, higher end rhythm game where you play on actual uh, guitars or bass guitars. Oh, it'll give cool. you like special strings and a special USB uh, attachment to to read the uh, what you're actually playing. Mm -hmm. But the way that they step you through from easy difficulty up to actual song level yeah. doesn't match the way I would expect to be learning how to play. So it's like, no, I, sh I should be hammering on right now. Why are you not letting me hammer on? <laughs> cool. Yeah. Uh, next up, we've got Dream Writer. Who asks if Lur were to do another road quest, which would be your preferred role? Driver, rider, or producer, or something else? So I tagged this one because I was like, well, we have all three of us were on that show. Mm -hmm. We have two drivers uh and a rider. We don't have a producer, but that's fine. Um, so I'm actually legit curious of what your answers are on this one. So mm, I mean in an ideal world, like, are we talking like ideal situation? Yeah, I think yeah. the next the next road Blue quest sky. would be all female. That's how I would do it. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be involved. All <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I just think that would be very cool to do. Um, but uh, if I had to pick one, I guess driver this time because I rode last time. I don't mind doing long drives either. Mm -hmm. So probably do that. I don't know who I would want to have as my co-pilot i don't think i have like a particular choice either way <laughs> but it can't be james because james and i get along too well together mm -hmm. you know what i mean and it's like a thing that people know how we interact with each other the thing with like road quests is like i had never 
been stuck in an enclosed I, space with beach yeah. no i think that's important in my life yeah like yeah. i mean i like i know that that kind of came up like obviously like uh, not james and like ha 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 but honestly like i think that no i mean i bet yeah, no, like, 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 <laughs> i honestly think that if yeah. you and i were in that car together um there would be because we've been friends for so long we're pretty comfortable with just kind of hanging out in silence yeah i think that would happen a lot yeah, like i think we would anything. just sort of like settle in and just kind of hang out and just mm -hmm. chill and be like fine with the quiet which wouldn't really work super well yeah. for it which is why i think it was important that we we did the the pairings that we did for road quest because yeah mm -hmm. i think pairing people up with an sort of somebody you wouldn't necessarily expect to pair somebody up with yeah uh, was yeah. important so i mean being really, really well. show. being in a car with bj i was just like constantly bombarded with this radiating <laughs> oh, yeah. sexual energy you know and i was just like i didn't really know how to handle it and yeah yeah that wouldn't gotta... change no matter who's be who be <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. it's so oppressive it's just like it feels like it's pushing me up against a door you know <laughs> ian I would absolutely, I mean, I love to perform and I love to drive. So those are the two things that, I mean, if, if I were to be asked back for another road quest, that would absolutely be where I'd love to be. Uh, if I could choose a uh, a co-partner on that, honestly, I would love to get stuck in a car with Wheeler for a uh, for four days. Yeah. <laughs> Wheeler would be, would be good. Yeah. yeah, Wheeler would be a banger. Yeah, he'd be yeah. good. Um, I would probably, if I, if we do another road quest, um, I would probably be interested in taking on the producer role um i think that would just be a, an interesting new challenge mm -hmm. uh which i think would be a lot of fun um but if i needed to be in the car i would i would still probably need to be a driver i don't think i would um do well as a rider um i think i need if i'm in a car i really much prefer to be behind the wheel especially when it comes to like long trips like that <laughs> um so it would go producer driver rider True gamer's got to have his hand on the controls. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I would just actually, I would drive James and you could sit in the side and I would just give you a steering wheel that's not plugged in. <laughs> Get a little F Fisher Price uh, Fisher Fisher box Price. one. <laughs> no, it'd be just a real steering wheel, but it's not hooked up to anything. <laughs> You there just you get go, one buddy. of those driver's ed cars oh, that, where, yes. like, they have the, the override side. Yeah, I like it. But you just That's... disconnect everything. So I have my own brake and gas <laughs> yeah, and I mean, pretend horn. You had to make all the noises. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Well, the Anti Muffin is going to take us out of this little reverie. They have a question that says this question might be too serious, but after a wildfire burned down hundreds of homes near my town, uh, only a couple minutes away. I can't stop thinking about it. Once your family and pets are safe, what do you say from the fire if you only have five minutes? What do you own that's that hard to replace? Nothing. I think I would yeah, just, I would just I, peace out, man. I mean, <laughs> like, look, I mean, look, if I had five, like, let's assume that you have five minutes that are perfectly safe. Nothing can possibly go wrong within absolute reason. Like, obviously, you can't save everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would probably, I mean, just in terms of value, I would try to get all my vinyl records out <laughs> um, because it's probably the collection that I am most attached to that has the most amount of sort of me into it. Like, I'm looking at my desk. I think it's either the vinyl collection or there's a shelf above my desk um, that is just full of crap. Um, mm -hmm. just random bits and bobs from throughout the years, mostly from out the last like 15, 20 years of like loading ready run. Some of it's just like, you know, whatever, like the D and D red bar bo box set and a few video games and stuff like that. But a lot of it's like magic cards and like little bits and bobs from conventions and gifts from friends and stuff like that. That's, I would probably just shovel all that into a box and, and be pretty happy. Um, but yeah, that or the vinyls is probably what I tried to save. Yeah, most of the stuff that I that I own, I know can be easily replaced. Well, yeah. not easily replaced, but can be replaced with just money and time. But it's yep. it's hunting all of that down. That's the hard part. Is the it's trying to take catalog. But I think there are a couple figures that I would probably grab that I picked up when I was in Japan of a uh, some girl with some uh, carrots sticking out the back of her. Her name is Mina. Some will, people will know. I'm not going to explain it here. But I think that's all I'd need to grab. The rest is just time. Fair. I just got an air fryer. I'd save that. <laughs> <laughs> Still got the warranty. Yeah. What's what's the air fryer's name? James. 
Yes, <laughs> I am an air fryer. I have become all powerful. <laughs> this is the first step along to. Actually, just kidding. I leave it in the fire. I'm... <laughs> oh, now that it's named James, okay, now, I see where it goes. now that it's, it's named James, it's completely replaceable. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. All right. Well, we're all out of the fire now, uh, yeah. and we each have the opportunity to pick a game that the other two have to play. Mm -hmm. uh, what game do we pick? And what's the reaction you expect to get from them and their experiences that they will get with that game? Um, you have to pick a game for the other two to play. Um, James has to play Dark Souls. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I think that's But the probably... good one, the Dark Souls 3, not the crappy ones. One and two. There, I said it. <laughs> well, there goes the comment section. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> um... <laughs> I mean, I like one and two, but I don't think they're that great. No, that's fair. That's fair. That's So of all the Souls games... That's Three? the one I play. Is that over like Bloodborne or? I, yeah, I, I think Bloodborne doesn't translate well because Bloodborne at thirty frames per second just does not feel good to play. Mm, that's fair. If there that's was fair. a Bloodborne version that was sixty frames, I would make you play that. All right, cool. Okay. What kind of reaction would I get out of James? He wouldn't. I. I would like. I mean this in the nicest way possible. James wouldn't want to finish it. Probably it's not. James's not. game. James no, wouldn't like it. Not my kind James of game, would be miserable. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It'd be funny to watch him though. Um, uh, for Ian, I can't pick anything weird because Ian will just be like, "Yeah, that sounds great." You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, hmm. Ian's a tougher one, mm -hmm. right? Because Ian, Ian's much more one. like malleable than James is with his game choice. I feel. Oh no. You know, like Ian will be much more like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Right. James is very like rigid and that's not a bad thing. Right. Like James likes what he likes and that's it. Hmm. I don't know what I would pick for Ian. <laughs> what have you got, Ian? You got choices? I mean, I, I'm, I'm absolutely giving you both Yakuza like a dragon. The most mm -hmm. recent one, mm -hmm. seventh. And I, I would just say, please take three hours and just play through that bit. And I think that the, the people get really uh, intimidated by those games. Well, there because... are like a million of them. Yeah, yeah there, there are a million are. of them. I think it's like a lot. I think it's like coming to Magic at this time. You come in and you're like, there are so many sets. What do I do? Yeah. It's like baseball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot like that. And, and there's a lot of culture behind it. It very easily mirrors mm -hmm. Japan. But I think if you give it the time, if, if you give it enough time, like a movie, so that you can steep in it, so you can see what the game actually expects out of you and what's happening. I think you'd actually get engaged with this very deep story and then also, you know, go off and collect cans for 20 minutes and have fun doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, so you, you, um, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. You've actually, I mean, Adam's actually played Minecraft now a few times over the last couple weeks. Mm -hmm. um the the episode with uh you and me and ben and serge and alex was fun but not quite what i wanted to see with you playing minecraft so i still probably would have picked minecraft and then you cut you randomly played minecraft for <laughs> two days yeah. this uh earlier in in january and watching you play that uh genuinely trying to to play minecraft and like build a house and figure out everything about that game without looking it up was super fascinating. Um, Everyone gives Path of Exile a hard time because they don't teach you anything. Minecraft doesn't teach you anything. No, no. no much is no better. Yeah, you know? it's not. Actually, I'd like to see Ian play Path of Exile. Ooh, yeah, that's a that's a that's what I would. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and yeah. In that sense, like I think watching Ian play like something like Path or Tarkov, mm -hmm. just two both very weird, <laughs> impenetrable games, yeah. uh, would be a lot of fun for sure. I just like, I mean, like I like because I went through that experience myself with the Path of Exile. It's like there is a way to learn it. It just takes a long time, so it's like, but it's fun to see like how people approach it. Because yeah, some people excellent. will just be like with like Minecraft. It's like it's very easy just to look things up. Yes. Right. And people were like trying to help me, but it's like, I need to, I'm talking out loud. Like I'm asking these questions out loud, but I don't actually want an answer because I only get to experience for the first time once. Right. Like I literally only get to do this one time. So it's like either this frustrates you and you can't watch somebody play it like this, which is also fine. But <laughs> I think that it's an experience that is not um, embraced enough by people. 
I mean, it's, 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 it's a lot different now. Like, you know, growing, like we're, we're of an age, right. Where, when we played video games as a kid, there was no internet, there was no YouTube. <laughs> we, it's so we wild to think about, that, right? Yeah. There were and a lot like fewer games, yeah, a lot fewer games. And you think about something like Minecraft, which is about an eleven-year-old game now. Um, but every every person who who plays that game probably just grew up watching Minecraft videos on YouTube and and learning how to play the game via that. Mm -hmm. um, but we didn't get that when we were kids. And I think we still look for that, which case in point, you just did that the other day with Minecraft, right? And it was really interesting to watch because yeah. it is not a game that lends itself well to just not knowing a damn thing about it and just trying to let the game explain it to you because the game does not explain it to you. They don't tell you anything. anything. No, it it's doesn't. If they literally Minecraft, tell you nothing. Yep. If Minecraft had come out ten years earlier, we would have had one of those like big Brady's manuals. Yeah. Of all absolutely. the stuff you could do. I mean, there are like. Videos. I mean, go to a go to go to a your local bookshop. I guarantee you, there's probably an entire shelf dedicated to Minecraft. Which I'm is pretty sure I've seen a Minecraft for Dummies but... book. <laughs> oh yeah, no, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's wild. I don't know, man. Ooh. Like, it's just like, I think people would do themselves a very big favor if they just. Pick up a random game that you think you would never play. Don't look up at anything and just start playing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's going to make you better at other games too, right? Yep. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll make developers better at uh, making making their experiences games, yeah. better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of making things better, uh, are there any videos that we regret making or we think haven't aged well? Um. So. I don't think there's any a video that uh, we regret making. I think there are absolutely jokes in our older videos that haven't aged well, for sure, yeah, without absolutely. question. Um, and I think it's important to acknowledge that. Um, I, I, and then I, I think that whenever somebody um, brings it up on, say, Twitter or something like that, we we are very uh, straightforward about that with them saying, yeah, that we agree. That's probably not great. Mm -hmm. um, that is not a joke we would ever make now for sure. No. Um, and it's, but it's not something that I think we necessarily regret. Yeah, um, it's... Like we wish we'd never did, you know, mm -hmm. things are a product of their time and people grow. And I think everything we do now is significantly better than what we did before. Do you and know what we'll is this exactly in the lines of that? You know, a movie I just rewatched recently. Mm -hmm. No, do you know what I'm thinking of James? I, no, <laughs> um, I rewatched Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Oh really? god, that movie does not age well. I mean, almost <laughs> every Kevin Smith movie hasn't really aged that no. well, which is why yeah. I'm pretty interested to see what Clerks Three is like. Yeah, um, which comes out this year. Um, but yeah, that does not surprise me in the slightest. I mean, yeah, that movie was... is 22, 21 years old. It's so old. It's oh, absurd, Lord. and and. Yeah, late '90s, early 2000s humor, especially, has that was a rough not time. has not yeah, done tough. has not done any favors for itself over no. the years. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I yeah, that, there's nothing I regret making, but absolutely things haven't aged well. But we mm, have, yeah, I, yeah, I've, I've absolutely made some choices in the past that I would not make today. But yeah, yeah, nothing that's worth burning the whole house down. Yeah. I mean, my big thing was like on old streams, I would say like things were retarded all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's like, a big it was just one. A, that was a big one. And then yeah. when I first started streaming with Lara, people were just like, hey, um, could you not say that? And I'm like, but why? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, right. Yeah, that makes <laughs> yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. And there are still, there are yeah. still, yeah. And there are still words that I'm trying to knock out of me. I did it earlier in this episode. I said lame. And it's one I'm trying to to mm. really knock out Actually, of me. Actually, yeah, but that's a good still point. Happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It still happens. Mm -hmm. So. But just you know, good. try I, to get better every day, and you're 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 on the right track. Mm -hmm. yeah. Speaking of getting better, uh, Adam, Mr. Mm -hmm. SVCD would like to know what is the best thing about <laughs> Ian and James. Oh boy, are you ready? All right, <laughs> uh, let's see, Ian. Ian, you've mm -hmm. got like this really like very put together weirdness about you. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like an adult who is allowed to be weird, but you're also like, yeah, he's got it together, right? You're not like weird, weird. You know, you're just Ian. It's like this, uh, this very um, normalized chaos to you, I guess, is the way I would use to explain it. It's just like, I don't know. I like the way you think about things, and I like the way you approach things. And I don't get a lot of your jokes, but that's okay too, right? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's fine, you know? But it's like, but people like Graham and Beej get all your jokes because they're just as, like, 
in tune with like pop culture as you Mm -hmm. are you know and i'm not but that's okay too but that's part of the thing i like about you it's like sometimes when you make the pop culture reference and even if i don't get it i'll laugh anyway because i know that it was probably very funny you know (laughs) (laughs) i just just want to fit in (laughs) yeah i appreciate that it's not i love inside jokes yeah i wish i was a part of some of them (laughs) um anything else no i think that's like probably one of the best things about you and james you're okay yeah i got this cool hoodie it has <laughs> charisma on it very white. no james is like james has a very like underrated sense of humor i feel like not a lot of people like when they look at lures like the grand scope of it they're like james is one of the funny ones right usually yeah. like graham or kathleen or like Cameron or Beej or like you know what I mean? Just, People don't. I, thought, I genuinely thought you were just going to name every single person. <laughs> <laughs> like just Ben or Ed, Wheeler ben or, or Cameron, or Heather, Corey, Corey Heavy, yeah. uh, Alex, Alex, Larry. Y'all, Alex. y'all remember Tim? Tim yeah, that guy, yeah, Tim. Remember Tim, yeah. <laughs> Tim was great. Yeah. Jeremy, Jeremy, Paul. Uh. <laughs> no, but I think that yeah, I don't know. People underestimate James's uh comedic chops i think and that's one of my favorite things about james but i think it's a lot of it is too because we've spent so much time together that i'm very in tune with james's sense of humor and how he says things and the way he he does things he's also like very dependable and uh very consistent consistency is james's probably one of james's strongest Mm. points it's like you always kind of know he's always there you always know what you're going to get out of him it's never like Never really throws you a curveball. So you know? three C's from from James. Yeah. Four C's. Consist- charisma. Con- consistent. Uh, the fourth C. The uh, consistent, 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 and charismatic. <laughs> and you know what I'm consistent about? This hoodie. I've worn it for like six days in a row. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Well, we should probably wrap this up with uh, with something. Uh, oh, well, now we've had the sweet treats for our ears. Let's think about sweet treats for the mouth. Bruce Clark asks, they're opening a Tim Hortons near my home in the UK. This is new and scary. What would you recommend as my first purchase? Gretzky, 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 Gretzky. No, not the Gretzky. (laughs) But I would say just go get a double double. Nope, Gretzky. No, don't do don't do the Gretzky. So for anybody who doesn't know what a Gretzky is, it is a coffee with nine cream and nine sugar. Yeah, the 99, baby. The 99. It is it is undrinkable garbage. Yeah. Um, I can't remember. It's. I think it's been tried on Desert Bus a few times over the years, so I'm sure you can go find reactions to it. Um, but it's it's not good. It is a waste <laughs> of your. I don't know. Pound, one yeah. pound. I don't know how much a, <laughs> how much a coffee is going to cost there. <clears throat> but um, uh, I I would just recommend yeah trying the the classic double double, which is literally just a coffee with two cream, two sugar, and and seeing what it's all about. Mm-hmm. That being said, you know. It, Tim Hortons has changed ownership so many times and recipes. I don't even really know. Like, it's more just the idea oh, of the double double yeah. as a classic thing rather Look, than the actual like, coffee like, itself. I'll be the first to... person to tell you that Tim Hortons is garbage. It's yeah, so bad. it's not great. <laughs> yeah, but I still do it all the time. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. If you want the ex- the authentic experience of a Tim Hortons in the UK, like go to uh, go to Marks and Spencers, grab a coffee there, and write Sterling Moss on the side of your cup. <laughs> You got to get some Timbits. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I think like, so. I think like a double double and like a 10 pack of Timbits. 40 pack of Timbits. Sit down oh, and 40 really pack just, of, yeah, yeah, just yeah. Lean get, in. A, get a Gretzky and a 40 pack of Timbits. <laughs> oh, oh, God. <laughs> and then say, damn you, Tim Hortons, for uh, giving me onset diabetes. Yeah, that is so much sugar. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, uh, so I think, yeah, yeah. That's, that pretty much covers uh, Tim Hortons, doesn't it? I, I think I so. Think yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. nothing really like, you know what I mean? Like when most people think about like their favorite chain restaurants or like their local, I feel like this is more in America than it is in Canada. We're like, we have Tim Hortons, but like every section of America has like these little chains that are like localized yeah. in that part of the yeah, U S it's like with five them. guys yeah. in and out or like, yeah. you know, like, uh, I'm trying to think Duncan. of what else. Duncan, Duncan wishes it could well Duncan wishes they could have the penetration that Tim Hortons has in Canada. Yeah. But. So it's just like, but as far as Canada goes, that's all we really have, I guess. There's nothing really like 
like that here on in BC even. You know what I mean? There's not like mm -hmm. a chain like that. We, we just so. have too many good independent shops specifically here. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. But speaking of too many good independent shops, um, we've got two of them. Or at least we got one of them. We got store.loadingreadyrun.com. You should go check that out if you'd like to get any uh, merchandise and uh, help us out there. It'll make Beej very happy. Uh, but if you'd like to support us in other ways, you can support us right here on YouTube uh, at youtube.com slash loadingreadyrun. Become a member and you too can uh, get your questions to us for the next time we do an Ask Lar. And of course, once again, if you'd like to support us on a more long-term basis, please check out patreon.com slash loadingreadyrun. That's where we would love to have you uh, support us monetarily because your support by watching is always appreciated mm -hmm. so from uh, james and uh, adam gonna say thanks so much for watching and we will see you next time bye, bye. <laughs>